In our last episode, I answered Robert Brown's challenge to prove him wrong to win $10,000. Well, I did it quite easily, as you know, and I'm about to do it again. In case you have not heard, Robert Brown of the John Birch Society has put out a challenge to prove him wrong, and if you can do it, he will pay you $10,000. All that is required is to produce one quote from a delegate of the 1787 Federal Convention who believed he had the authority to propose the Constitution. And here's, here's the challenge I put out. Where is the delegate who said they had the authority? As you see at the top of the right-hand column here, We've never found a single delegate who said so. We've never found a single dele who, delegate who made the claim, yes, we do have the authority. Let's move forward with these proposals. We can change the constitution as we need to. Welcome to All Things Article 5, where we do a deep dive into the constitution's amending provision to break through all of the misinformation out there and get to the truth. Whether you're an Article 5 activist like myself, or maybe you're just new to the subject matter and want to learn more about it, this is the place to be. I guarantee you won't want to miss an episode. So please make sure you subscribe to this channel and share it with your friends. Are you like me and wish there was something else we could do instead of voting election after election thinking something will change in Washington, D.C.? Well, what if I told you there is something incredible that the framers gave us in the Constitution? And it gives us, we the people, the power through our state legislatures to propose amendments without the consent of Congress. And then this is the channel for you, so please stick around. Up next is my second proof that Robert Brown is wrong, and this one is really ties well in with the last episode on Wilson. So if you have not watched that one yet, please go back and do so before you go through this video. It is well worth it. Today, we will hear from Rufus King from the state of Massachusetts. King was a delegate from Massachusetts to the Continental Congress, a delegate to the 1787 Federal Convention, and he returned to Massachusetts to use his influence to help ratify the Constitution. He moved to New York and was elected to the United States Senate in 1789 and remained in office until 1796. He was appointed by President George Washington to the position of Minister to Great Britain. In 1813, King returned to the Senate and remained in office until 1825. So we're going to continue on this first principle foundation, and I want to share a couple quotes from the Federalist Papers. This is from Federalist 23, and all these links will be in the, in the channel below. Quote, there is an absolute necessity for an entire change in the first principles of the system, that if we are in earnest about giving the union energy and duration, we must abandon the vain project of legislating upon the states in their collective capacities. We must extend the laws of the federal government to the individual citizens of America. Now, the next quote comes from Federalist 37. Quote, the novelty of the undertaking immediately strikes us. It has been shown in the course of these papers that the existing confederation is founded on principles which are fallacious and that we must consequently change this first foundation and with it, the superstructure resting upon it, unquote. You see, first principles are key, and Rufus King is going to say exactly the same thing that James Wilson said. A motion was made to let each of the states decide how they would ratify the Constitution, which began a discussion about the lack of the Maryland Constitution having a mode for changing it. Mr. King thought that removing conventions as the mode of ratification would be the end of the Constitution because the state legislatures would oppose ratification. Mr. Madison also thought conventions should be required also because the state legislatures would not ratify it. Referring to the people in Maryland, he said, quote, the people were, in fact, the fountain of all power. And by resorting to them, all difficulties were got over. They could alter constitutions as they pleased. It was a principle in the Bill of Rights that first principles might be resorted to. Unquote. 
Rufus King, now here is what I want you to see. Rufus King stated, quote, that the Constitution of Massachusetts was made unalterable to the year 1790. Yet this was no difficulty with him. In referring to his own commission, he stated, quote, the state must have contemplated a recurrence to first principles before they sent deputies to this convention, unquote. There he is pointing to his very own commission about first principles which would require ratification by the people. That's the moneymaker right there. That proves, but you know what? I'm going to continue because he even said more. Now that quote alone really proves the point, but let me just share some more just to seal this deal so there's no gray area. Now in Rufus King's own notes on August 8th, under the, uh, the heading Powers of the Convention, oh, this is so beautiful, Mr. King, quote, we have power to propose anything but to conclude nothing. Boom! There it is. Rufus King said exactly the same thing as James, uh, James Wilson did. I've got the power, and there it is, proving that he pointed to his commission, claiming that he had the power to propose anything, yet they could not act or conclude on those powers because they were going to have the people ratify the Constitution because they were resorting to first principles. He absolutely believed the federal convention and the legislature that appointed him as a commissioner gave him the authority to recur to these first principles and that he had the power to propose the new constitution. So there you have it. Proof number two, Rufus King from Massachusetts. There it is. Two proofs so far that the delegates to the convention knew that they had the authority to propose a new constitution. James Wilson from Pennsylvania and Rufus King from Massachusetts. Stay tuned for the next episode. I don't want to give it away, but I think you're going to like it. With all things Article 5, I am Ken Quinn. Remember, experience must be your only guide. Fear will paralyze us. So fear not. Let's have some fun, and the truth will prevail. Till next time.